Without any further ado, I'd like to ask if you all would stand to your feet and help me, help me introduce to some and present to others the greatest man of God on the earth right now that I know, the greatest man of God. I've seen a lot of, a lot of preachers. They even got shows now, preachers of LA and all this here. But um, I haven't seen anybody that does the works that Jesus said that we would do. Jesus said, the works that I do, ye shall do, and greater works. I read one account where, where Jesus fed 4,000. Read another account where he fed 5,000. I read another account where um, I came out here even and fed 7,500. But this man of God right here been serving and feeding 30, 40,000 people every year for the last 20 some years. Y'all don't hear me? Yeah, he's he been doing this consistently for the last 20 some years, feeding folks, giving away houses, cars, bicycles to the children, having health fairs and job fairs and home buy expert expos. And, and people say, oh, look what you've done. All I do is what I see my father do. That's all. That's all. It wasn't hard. He laid the groundwork. He showed me how to do it. The only difference is I had sense enough to listen to him. That's the only difference. See, and see some of y'all knuckleheads out there. Oh, I'm going to tell it like it is. It, it, some of y'all knuckleheads out there. I'm going to tell it like it is. You know why I can tell it like that? Because I was a knucklehead. I was a knucklehead. It took me a little while to get the point. You understand? But I found out a man that can't serve another man is a sucker, a sissy. Because God don't do anything in this earth realm unless he uses a man. Jesus said, it is finished. My work is done, and I'm going to go sit down at the right hand of the Father, and I'm going to give some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to perfect the saints. And I thank God I had enough sense to let this man perfect me so all that you see, all the properties we own on this Antelope Valley, the degrees, the wife, the children, all of them say, all my grandchildren say, everything you see. It's because I listen to this man right here, the greatest man on the earth right now. Our own bishop is in the house. Yeah. Yeah, let's not get it twisted now. Let's make it plain up in here. I knew the Lord. I was saved, but I was still a crackhead. I knew the Lord. I was saved, but I was still shooting folks. I knew the Lord. I was saved, but I was still an alcoholic. I knew the Lord. I was saved, but I was still a gambler. I knew the Lord. I was saved, but I was still a womanizer. I knew the Lord. But when I met this man of God, I put away childish things and went on and did what God called me to do, just like he done called a bunch of y'all to do. And as soon as you wake up, you will put away childish things. Let's give God a hand praise for the greatest man on the earth, Bishop Edward Romero Turner. He's in the house. Let's give God glory. I done see blinded eyes open from this man laying his hands on him. I done see leg crippled legs healed. I done see this man do great works. The anointing of Almighty God all over this man's life. And it's been on it for 30-some years since I've been knowing him. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus will let you be a fool. But this man told me he wasn't going to let me destroy my life. Uh, that's how that goes. 
I just had to tell it like it is. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a thunderous hand praise as we receive the man of the hour, my father, the anointed, the qualified, the sanctified, the appointed, the called bishop of California is in the house, yo. Give God hand praise for bishop. In the Lord, wonderful. Yeah. Somebody said, what, what a mighty God we serve. Say it again, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Yeah. Heaven and earth adore him. Yeah. What a mighty God we serve. Ain't he all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that's within me, I will bless his holy name. I'm like David when he declared that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I love the Lord this morning, this evening. Come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together because this poor man cried and the Lord heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. Tell somebody, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and blesses the man that trusted in the Lord. Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? Come on, shake hands with my three people and tell the Lord's all right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's all right with me. I'm, uh, before, before I get started, I wanted to, you know, uh, Pastor Jackson uh, had mentioned something about Pastor Carolyn. And I told him, I'll handle Pastor Carolyn because there is no way that I could have succeeded at anything that God has given me to do without this woman standing by my side. And, and, and I'm not just up here talking because I'm in front of you, but I thank God for this strong woman, yet fragile but strong, who has stood by my side when I have seen some of everybody do everything but stand. See, people, I was telling Pastor Jackson, you know, people give us accolades and we have our appreciations and I let him know uh, to let the people appreciate you. And I think people ought to do it every month, it just every, every month. Just stop and say thank you. As a matter of fact, every time they see you, they ought to just be like the monks. When the, monk, the, when the Buddhist people see one of their monks, they'll stop out of traffic. If they're on the freeway, if we're in a traffic jam, they'll get out the car, jump over the divider just to let that monk see them so they can go back because they know there's a blessing in seeing that monk. You need to understand there's a blessing every time you see this man, you're blessed. If God honor you to let you behold him, you're blessed. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Pastor Carolyn, back to Pastor Carolyn, um, she has stood by my side when the going got tough and the so-called tough got going she was there and filled in the gap never wavered never tired never quit but kept on doing what God called her to do a very spiritual woman and one who has kept me, amen, with my feet planted on the ground. Because let me tell you something, alongside, if God has greatness on you at all, look at your neighbor and say, as a matter of fact, I see greatness in you right now. If God has greatness on you at all, what walk alongside of greatness is every kind of trial and test 
and tribulations that you can ever imagine. But here's the power, is that we don't quit. I'm going to say it again. Here's the power, is that we don't quit. And we declare greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor. You are a cold piece of work. I love you with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul, with all of my pancreas. You are a cold piece of work, girlfriend. And I want to, if I come back to this plan, I want to have a mother like you, a sister like you, a daughter like you, and another wife just like you. Come on up and say hello with your gorgeous self. Put your hands together. This is my confidant, my friend. This is who I come to and run to when I need. Y'all ain't having church in here yet. Somebody scream in this house for one of the coldest sisters on the planet, Pastor Carolyn. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do me a favor and let's put our hands together for two great men of God. One great woman of God and a whole congregation of great people. Glory, hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise up in here. We're in for a treat today. These are appointed, anointed, and consecrated men of God. Put your hands together and let's be blessed. God bless you. Happy birthday. Power of love. Let's party. Wow, she is, she's so very proud of uh, all of you, and every time we mention Pastor Jackson and Sister Constant, she's, a, she's something else too, I tell you. I'll never forget the time when Pastor Jackson um, came to me and he was in my office and said that he didn't have any money, and he was about to lose his house. Remember that? And I looked at him, I was sitting behind my desk, and I said, wait, well, hey, what do you worry, what you think I should do? I said, well, go to school. He looked at me, go to school. Got upset and uh, went home, told his wife, he said, I've been going to this church and helping the pastor and helping this church, and he was fussing. I went to him like I had a need, and he told me to go to school. Can you believe that? And she said, well, you've been listening at everything else he told you to do. Why don't you listen at that? <laughs> Wise wife. Because today, and you best believe I brag about this all over everywhere I go. Today, he holds a bachelor's degree from USC, one of your top universities in this world and business management. Somebody ought to say amen. I am so proud of this man. I don't know what to do with myself. I said I'm proud of him. And you ought to be proud of him too. Y'all have a gym and don't you do nothing but show it off. So look at, if you got a bad ring, you're going to show everybody. Come on, girlfriend. You're going to be all up in your face and company. Come on. Y'all have a gym in this man. You have an awesome man of God. And let me tell you this, let me tell you this. I was talking about, I was talking about being consistent earlier today and being faithful. See, what you don't understand is um, when Jesus said in Revelation, this is not my text, but I want to just kind of mention this. In Revelation 2.10, where he tells us, he says, some of y'all are going to be tried 10 days. He said, they will even throw some of y'all in jail. He said, but be thou what? Say it louder. Faithful. Faithful. That means consistent, reliable, accurate. He said, be thou faithful unto death, and then I'm going to give you a crown of life. One of the things that I can say about this man, and I'll talk about it a little later on, is that he was faithful at Power of Love Christian Fellowship for 14 years. He, he didn't just come, but he served. 
Wait a minute, y'all didn't catch that. He didn't just show up and if I called prayer meeting, he was there. If we had 7 o'clock prayer in the morning, he was there. We had 9 o'clock Sunday school, he was there. 11 o'clock service, he was there. Come on, 3 o'clock service, he was there. 7 o'clock service, he was there. And he gave at every one of the services. Amen, somebody. And he blessed the Lord. And it's no wonder God has opened doors for him and made ways for him. Because be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Somebody get happy and shout glory. You can say whatever you want. If you feed of his spirit, then he is entitled to everything you have that's natural. Read your Bible. See, a lot of times we want to walk around and say, you know, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap. We try to use it in a negative connotation. But what Paul was actually saying, that if you get from his spirit, come on, somebody, then he, you are, he ought to be able to reap of that which you have that's natural so he can be sustained. Amen? And then he says, be not deceived, for God is not marked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. There is no way you're supposed to come in here and reap from this man and get from this man and not make a deposit back into his life. Because that is change ain't no robbery. But you got some folks, all they want to do is get, get, take, take. Come on, somebody. You, you know what that's called, right? A parasite. If you look up the definition of a parasite, it is a biological organism that attaches itself to another biological organism and feeds off of that organism. Come on, somebody. As the host without giving any benefit to the host. And it's time out for Christian folk. T tell, your, t tell your neighbor, don't be parasitical in nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to give something back. Because if you don't, then you <clears throat> have just contracted what they call the spirit of greed. I want you to put that in your spirit. Say it with me, the spirit of greed. Spirit of greed. Say it again, the spirit of greed. Spirit of greed. Now, 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 I told Pastor Jackson I didn't know what God was going to give me to talk about, but he just gave me something to talk about. And I knew that he would because he has never failed me yet. But I'm going to open my mouth and give you what you need by the spirit of the living God because it's not by might nor by power but it's by my spirit said the Lord amen and there is an anointing God has placed on my life let me tell you something I don't care what channel 7 news says I don't care what the political climate says I was a man to God for I met him and I'll be a man to God after they're gone and I'll continue to let the Lord use me to come against the yokes of the devil in 2 chapter 3 because that's the reason God places anointing on my life. Somebody ought to shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Now, let me tell you this to you. I have 41 years in ministry. Now, you've been known for, for 30 years, but there's 11 years underground work that you have no no, no knowledge of, way before I met anybody in this room, except for Pastor Carolyn, 41 years of ministry. I've been all over this country with ministry. I've been to Africa. I've been to India. I've been to Malaysia. I've been all over this world practically, amen, with, with, with the word of God. And, and guess what? God has deposited something in my life for you. And, and this is how you do it. You know how you get it out of me? You sit at the edge of your seat and you want it. Like this man used to do. He wanted it. And he got it. Somebody ought to shout, he got it. And I'm here to tell you, you haven't seen anything yet. 
Tell you a little bit, it's got folk coming from the east and the west. I got goosebumps all over me now. The north and the south, God give me to send three money people to this church. And everything that you want, God, I tell you this side. There's no finances for you. Glory to God, God don't give you three Zach keys. Somebody else, I got goosebumps right now. Somebody ought to shout glory. I told Pastor Jackson the other night, I slept. And God has spoken into my life that there are three members amongst us. I don't know if there's power of love out there in the uh, south or power of love. Uh, well, this is north. So power of love north or south. I don't know where and somewhere in between. I don't know. But I saw $502,000 and I saw $504,000. One person showed me two checks. And, and you know what? Ain't nothing wrong with you saying that one of those shirts got to be mine. Talk to me, sir. I don't know why I'd be glad. Lord, that's my check. Come on. I, I said it's mine. It's mine. Tell somebody it's mine. Glory to God. Say it like you know it's yours. Get an attitude about it and say that 502 is mine. Oh, yeah, God didn't really bless somebody. I dare you to praise him right there. There's absolutely nobody like you. Thou art a great God, and besides you, there is no other God. You can do everything. And you have all power in your hands, and we just say thank you, sir. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've even been to ourselves. And we just want to lay everything aside right now and say thank you. Coming boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. Because whether we admit it or not, or whether we, we're even cognizant of it or not, we need you. We cannot do this without you. Have thine own way now. Give us words to speak. Go ahead, Lord, if you will, sir. Think through my mind and speak through my lips. Challenge your people. Pierce the heart. Your word will not return unto you, Lord, and for it will give you the praise. The glory and the honor shall be thine in Jesus' mighty and majestic name we pray. And the church said amen. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a thunderous hand praise out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, um, I was looking at Elliot and how powerful of a man he is. Yeah. Listening to him rock that song. And I, my mind was blown. Huh? That's a wonderful thing. Isn't that a precious soul? And Eric on the keys. I almost started crying when I saw that. Huh? Yeah. Lord Jesus. But I just want to say keep on keeping on. And uh, now, the, uh, Ju Julie in the back, he was sound technician. Lord have mercy. I must be getting old. Something's going on here. This, this don't feel right. Or oh, isn't the Lord good? Do, do you realize the same thing that's on this man is coming on you? Do, 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 do you realize your best days are yet in front of you? Do you realize that God's getting ready to bless you? And he's going to slap your enemies upside their head? Oh, that's, that's, we have some stuff going on you have no, you have no understanding, no knowledge of. 
See, you see, now, now, now here's the deal. The Bible styled you as sheep. And he has put a shepherd's call on us. And if you notice, sheep are blind. I mean, they're not totally blind, but they can't see a lick. And you can imagine when it's dark, they really can't see. But that shepherd's job is to see to it that that sheep are okay. Y'all not having church yet. And to lead you in the green pastures. Whether you can see the green or not, the shepherd has the power to see green pastures for you. Oh, I wish I had some church folks. See, what we got to understand is that the devil is doing everything in his power to jack that relationship up. He wants to come in between that. And he, he gave his demons a charge, and he's saying, by any means necessary, stop them. I don't care what you do, but you got to stop them. But you got to understand something. See, there is an anointing on this house. God brought together. Y'all better have some faith in me. Glory to God. There is an anointing. See, and the anointing shows up to destroy the yokes of the devil and the separate captive. I didn't say break them, but that anointing comes to destroy the yoke. It penetrates the spirit world, and it does things in a world that you cannot see with your natural eye. Come on, somebody. But it will produce the evidence in the natural world. Y'all not have a church with me right now. Glory to God. Somebody can be sick today, got to go to the doctor tomorrow, already diagnosed with their condition, set up under an anointing, go to the doctor tomorrow, and the doctor can't find nothing wrong and don't understand what happened. Well, it is an anointing that destroyed the yokes of the devil and set the captive free. Somebody shout glory. Some of you all have been healed because of this anointing. Some of you all have been blessed because of this anointing. You just ain't told nobody yet. Come on, somebody and shout glory. That's why Jesus told us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. I feel like preaching right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God set this relationship up. But what's happening in 2014 is that the people of God are being challenged. Oh, yeah. See, we don't want to see the man of God as the oracle of God. We want to be on his level. Well, you ain't on his level. And you will never be on his level. Because God set it up so that when he opens his mouth, stuff come out of his mouth that can't come out of yours. I wish I had some church folks. I'm going to help about five, I'm going to help about ten folks before I leave here. Let me tell you something. You can say the exact same words that this man said, and you will not have the exact same result. Let me, let me give you a person. I cook. And I cook real good. And I have folk come in my kitchen and they cook with me in that right, Sister Sherry. And watch everything I do. Isn't that right? To the T, and you go home. I just say they go home. And do exactly what I do, and it still don't taste like mine. And they're scratching their head trying to figure out why. It's the same thing with your pastor. Your man of God can speak into your life and your kids will come home. He can speak into your life. Your husband will get saved. He can speak into your life. Come on, somebody. And your child will get right in school. He can speak into your life and drive the devil out. He can speak into your life and crack cocaine has to run and hide. You can't do it, but he can because there is an anointing on his life for you. <laughs> now, I don't know why I'm talking like this because I got a notebook full of notes. But here's the 
here's the deal. You, you constantly transferring your spirit. I can see it. I can see it in your face. I can see it in your hairline. I can see it in your body mass. You're fasting in your prayer and your concern for God's people. I can see them sucking the pressure out of you. I can see it on your life. But where is the return? The shepherds take care of the sheep. But the sheep is supposed to take care of the shepherd. Well, how do we take care of the shepherd? Oh, we are little sheep, man, running around. Well, you know what? You grow something that he can't. See, see, you, you look, I don't, Lord, I don't, I, I told you God was going to do this to me. You, you grow something, he don't grow. I asked him coming in here, see, and you, he, and let me tell you, you don't know why he do a lot of stuff he does. Just like he didn't know why I did a lot of stuff I do. Men of God are mysterious. My driver, Mike is coming in the office to get me, and I know he was like, what in the world is he doing? And I started to tell him, man, listen, men of God are mysterious. We mysterious to our own self. We say things we don't know why we say. You know what? We go home and say, why did I tell her that? And then the next week, we see the manifestation of what God had to come out of our mouth because we are instruments in the hand of Almighty God. And God uses a man. See, the problem with the church, especially the black church, is that they can't get with the fact we men. They want us to be divine all the time. Well, we ain't divine all the time. We get mad too. Our wives get mad. We don't like folk either. Our wives don't like half of y'all. Because they see stuff in y'all we don't see. Because they women. I am sick and tired of Negroes coming around me thinking I got to have them. Don't come to church. Yeah, don't come. Nigga, that's, that's on you. I tell you what, stay home. And when God gets you ripping your behind, when God gets you dragging your son through hell, and dragging your daughter through hell because you are disrespectful fool. You gonna be all right. You see, I told Pastor Jackson, I said, I'm sitting there looking at your children playing, son on the keys, and Elliot up here dancing and singing. Just got my mind blown. I had I needed to go outside and take a breath of fresh air or something. I say it would trip him out to come around me like I was yesterday. My mother-in-law, 94 years old, Pastor Carolyn gives her mother a party. I'm sitting around in there for about five minutes. It blew my mind, so I had to get out of there and go get some fresh air. I got all these grandkids around me. See. I got about 15 years on him, and they don't realize that. I'm a little older than I look. Yeah, I, I'm a little older than I look. And so here God has tempered me to bring me to the place where I am today, not for me. See, God didn't hew this man out of society for himself. He sent him through the fire, sent him through the rain, 
tempered him. They lied on him. They talked about him. They treated him bad. They misused him, abused him, take advantage of him, take advantage of his good heart, do the same thing to his wife. Why did God send that man through all that hell? It wasn't for him. It's for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I wonder how many of you ever sit down and say, I wonder if my pastor's heart is broken. I wonder if he's crying tonight. I wonder how he's feeling. No, you don't think like that. Lord, I ain't even got to the Bible yet. I've gotten to the place, Pastor Jackson, where I sit down and I say, Lord, okay, what now? I'm like, you still got more? And God, oh, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> but I promise I won't put more on you than you're able to bear. I'd be like, you kidding me, right? Here we go again. See, they don't understand. We got to put up with, uh, Bishop, I ate some, uh, a taco, and, and I threw up yesterday. I won't be at church tomorrow. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, right? Wait a minute. When I with you and I ate the same taco and I got sick and threw up, but I got to come up here and preach tomorrow? And I have to be here. See, I, I got to make sure everything is all right. I got to make sure. I can't just take off like, you know, I just, I, you, I'm not going to Lancaster. I had to come. I wonder when we're going to get to the place where we have to do what God called us to do. We be expecting God to move mountains for us, but we won't even get up and move a little prayer for God.